In the day, an amusement park is a world of whimsy, a place filled with happiness and family fun. But at night, things soon start to change and it becomes the perfect setting for a horror game. The park is all about a mum called Lorraine who loses her son Callum in a place called Atlantic Island Park. It's clear from the get-go though that there's something not quite right about this place. There's a lot more going on here than first meets the eye and it's up to you to piece it all together. Gameplay is simple enough, walk around the small park and try to find Callum. Pressing the circle button will call out to him. Callum? Where'd you go? Over here! Giving the player a rough idea of which direction to head. It's always got a spooky atmosphere filled with unknowns, the main unknown being, are you alone? At first, every rustle of leaves or strange sound gives a nervous, on edge kind of reaction. It's clear that something bad happened here, but you have no idea what it was. So, what amusement park would be complete without rides? Along the way, players get to encounter the various fairground traditions. There's the bumper cars, the roller coaster, the ferris wheel. Embarking on these rides allows the story to progress, as Lorraine reveals her inner thoughts and lets you know a bit more about her past and about what's meant to be going on here. The voice acting is great, which is important because it's our only real way of connecting to this character. Don and I moved in together, but then, well, he died. It soon becomes clear that this game is dealing with some serious issues, more than just your typical Five Nights at Freddy's jump scares, despite what the opening thumbnail may look like. The quote-unquote horror moments usually occur at the end of the rides, so they're given time to be built up to, and there's even the opportunity to recite the entire story of Hansel and Gretel first. Your brother will make a good mouthful, the old witch told Gretel. Oh, spoilers by the way if you haven't heard Hansel and Gretel before. The fear factor doesn't really come from these moments. Sure, some of them are cool, but what really kept me engaged was the chance to find out what actually happened here. Without wanting to spoil anything, let me just say that Lorraine suffered from a troubled past. Callum's father died during her pregnancy, and when Callum was born, she suffered from postnatal depression. Her son was briefly taken away from her, she was put on a course of treatment, and let's leave it at that. Any more would give too much away. There are also the usual scraps of letters and newspapers to pick up, giving a little more backstory to the events. Just be sure to grab a magnifying glass first, because the font for some reason is tiny. By the way, the game actually froze on me at this point. Not technically a freeze because I could still move, but I couldn't put this damn letter down. I wondered for a while whether I wasn't meant to put it down yet because something was about to happen in the background here, but no. Reset game. The game ends on a high with a creepy yet shameless PT ripoff sequence, as you finally delve deeper into the past, and let me tell you, it ends with a shock. The game only lasts around an hour, maybe two at most, so is it worth it? Well, it suddenly gets you thinking. It's the type of game that must be played with headphones to get you fully immersed into the experience, and thinking about it, this would be the perfect kind of game to have PlayStation VR for. The industry is calling this sort of thing a walking simulator, i.e. no combat, no real puzzles to solve, just a unique way of telling a story. It has its high moments, and while it may not have any replayability value, it certainly does make you think long after putting the controller down. Thanks for watching. In my heart and mind, I always return to Atlantic Island Park. Got any thoughts on this game or on walking simulators in general? Then let me know in the comments below, and for more video game reviews, be sure to check out A's Gaming Moments.